Rabotai. Good morning to everybody. It's another beautiful day. We find at the end of the book of Bereshit, when Yaakov Avinu passed away, his 12 sons, they buried him. On the way back, when they came back, the brothers got really scared. When if you look at the chapter 50, the brothers of Yosef got frightened. What were they worried about it? Yosef might take a revenge on us. Well, let's look back in the history. How long the brothers living in Egypt? 17 years. 17 years they lived in Egypt and they sold yeah, Yosef going all the way back so many years past. They still worried about that Yosef might still remember. What happened all of a sudden they think Yosef might take revenge. Our father passed away. We don't really have a backup protection so he might take revenge. So if you look at me Farshim explain what made them think so that the Yosef might take revenge on them. As they were traveling back home after the burial Back to Mitzrayim, they buried, they buried Yaakov in, in Canaan, which is Israel in our days. On the way back, as they pa coming back, <coughs> Yosef, they passed by the pit where they threw Yosef. Yosef stopped and started looking at the pit. So that, at that point, the brothers understood, they got scared. He remembered it. Even though so many years passed, Yosef stopped and he was looking at the pit and he started walking further. So that's what frightened them, that he still remembers the pit. He might take revenge on us. But we don't understand what's happening in the mind of another person. Do you know why Yosef stopped and looked at the pit? He didn't have better things to do in life. He's a king, a ruler of the, almost the whole Egypt, millions of people, the strongest country in the world. What have I did? Oh, he had nothing else to, to think about. He stopped in order to make a bracha. There's a halacha. And if you pass by a place where a miracle happened to you, you have to stop and make a bracha in that place. Thank you, Hashem, for making a miracle for me in this place. So that's exactly what Yosef stopped. He stopped, he looked at the pit, because you have, in, before you make a bracha, you have to look. You, we don't make a bracha with, uh, with a close. You have to see it. First you have to see, then you make a bracha. So Yosef stopped, he looked at the pit, he made a blessing, thank you, Hashem, for making a miracle for me in this place. And he went further. They didn't hear the bracha. They didn't understand. Maybe they heard it, but sometimes you hear it, you don't want to hear it. Because you, we are in a different world. Like, wow, why is he stopping? Does he still remember the pit? Is he going to take revenge on us? So when you look at the chapter 50th and the Pasuk 15th, it says they got skeptical. And in Pasuk 18, it said they send a messenger that the to, to yourself, they sent a message. They were afraid to come themselves. They said, our father, before he passed away, he asked you to forgive us. This was one of the things that they got scared. So we see a big lesson, Rabotai. We cannot read another person's mind, and another person cannot read our minds. We see the situation not as is. We see the situation sometimes as we are. They're looking from the, their point of view. What's in the back, in back of their mind that he might take revenge? He's saying, no, grateful, I'm making bracha. So Baruch Hashem, it's a great thing happened to me. That's number one. Another thing Midrash explains what, they, what made them feel so skeptical, frightened. When the father used to be alive, Yosef would invite all the brothers for the suda. They would all brothers get together. And the father felt good because all of his children sitting on the same table. They make a suda, they make natilat yadayim, they make hamot, they make divre Torah, they make some prayer together. All of a sudden, after the father passed away, Rashi brings down, no more. Yosef doesn't get everybody together. What happened all of a sudden? Maybe he doesn't like us anymore, or he doesn't need us anymore, or maybe he wants to destroy us. So Chachamim explained, it's not the reason he didn't invite them. Because when all the brothers get together, now the question is who's going to sit by, who's supposed to be sitting by the head of the table? When a father used to be alive, the father should be sitting by the head of the table. But the father said to Yosef, you are the king. According to Torah, you must respect the king. That's why according to Halakha, when you see a king, you have to make a bracha. If it's a good king, good king doesn't destroy the Jewish people, you have to make a bracha, a blessing. In our days, we don't have a king, so we have a president. If in case you guys come across to see a president, like a President Trump, you have to make a bracha. There's a Halakha in Shulchan Aruch. So, Father Yaakov... Yaakov said, Yosef, you're going to sit by the head of the table. You are the king. We must all respect you. So, father passed away now. Who's supposed to be sitting by the head of the table? Yaakov, before he passed away, he, made a, he gave a bracha to Yehuda. He's going to be the king of the Jewish nation. Yehuda is the king of Jewish nation. 
Yosef is the king of the Egypt. And now you have also Bukhor, which is Ruben, the firstborn, should also be sitting by the head of the table. So Yosef goes, I don't know who should be sitting now. If I should be sitting because I'm a king of Egypt, I think Yehud is higher than me because he's a king of the Jewish nation forever till the end. Or Bukhor, Ruben is Bukhor, he should be sitting there. If I sit, he gets offended. But when the father was alive, nobody even get offended because the father should be sitting by the head of the table. But the father gave away kavod to Yosef. So he said, you know what? In order not to get to those arguments, not to get to, to politics, not to get to hatred or jealousy, I'm not going to get that together anymore. In order not to get into arguments and jealousy, why is Reuben sitting by the head of the table? Why is Yehudi sitting? Why is Yosef? So Yosef said not. But the brothers understood a different way, as Rash explains. They said, ah, he doesn't invite us anymore. Why? Maybe he wants to take revenge on us. Maybe he hates us. Maybe he, after the, what he saw the pit, he remembered. So now they're trying to build a story upon a story. You know, false story upon false story. After they saw what happened by the pit, they're thinking, they're building a story. Maybe he wants to take revenge on, upon us. Rabotai, we should never judge anyone. We don't know what's happening in another person's mind. If you have questions, come over. Ask to clarify. Ask. Why, Yosef, don't you invite us? Why can't we get together? Maybe let's get together in our houses. Ask, find out what is the problem, but do not judge. Our, the first thing we go